How is it going everybody? You're watching Then About Zach and today I'm going to show you everything that's new in the just released iOS 15.2, the second major software update in iOS 15. So let's get started with one of the coolest new features, which is right here in the camera app. This feature is exclusive to the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max because it has to do with the macro mode. So let me show you. Let me put my mug right here and I bring my iPhone very close to the mug. And as you guys can see, now we have this new icon, the macro icon, indicating that the iPhone has automatically switched to macro mode. And the coolest thing is you can enable it as it is automatically, or you can just disable by touching it and then it goes back to normal. So it's very nice to finally have control over this, to have control whether you wanna take a photo on macro mode and then you can zoom in so close and you won't lose any quality. Look at this, you get full quality, getting super, super close, or you can disable it and get a normal shot if that's what you want to. So finally, we have this manually controlled by the user. This feature has to be enabled though. You gotta go to settings and then scroll all the way down to camera and then scroll down a bit more and then you see right here at the bottom, macro control. So turn this on and you have that toggle to enable or disable macro inside the camera app. The next new feature has to do with the fact that iOS 15.2 can now detect if an iPhone has a non-genuine part. This is amazing, guys. So if we go to settings and we actually scroll down to general and about, we will have a new section right here if any part of my iPhone was replaced. Since this iPhone is all original, we can't see it here, but it would look something like this. So as you guys can see under about, we would have, for example, battery or camera. And if you have replaced a part and you have replaced by a genuine part, it'll just say genuine Apple part. That's okay, that's normal. But if it's not a genuine part, it'll say something like this, unknown part. So this is so, so cool, especially in the pre-owned market. If you wanna buy a secondhand iPhone or something like that, having the ability to just go to settings and then general and about and seeing if there has been a replacement and if there has, if it's a genuine or ungenuine part. This is super important and now it's super easy to check. Now let's talk about privacy. If we tap on settings and then we scroll down and go to privacy, and then we scroll all the way down, the last option is called App Privacy Report. So if we tap there, and this is all new to iOS 15.2, we have now the App Privacy Report. So we can turn this on, and this is a new feature that will start gathering data and giving you all sorts of important data related to your privacy. Like, for example, uh, when and which apps have actually requested your location or requested data from you. As you can see, I have just enabled the feature, so I don't have a lot of data to show you, but I have some photos that I can explain you a little bit more what this feature can do. As you can see, for example, you can see exactly when and which apps are actually having access to your camera. This is super important. More than that, as I said before, to your location, and it says exactly which apps, when, in the exact time that apps requested and actually got your location pinpointed by the minute and much, much more information. Like here, for example, you can see the domains contacted directly by an app. And you can do this app by app. So you can see that this domain, for example, it was contacted 106 times, this 151, this 149. And as I said, you can see this by app. So this is absolutely insane uh, if you actually care about your privacy, worry about your privacy like you should, you definitely want to have this feature enabled. You definitely want to have app privacy report turned on and check this because here is where everything happens. Now let's talk about another privacy feature, this one having to do with iMessage, especially if you have kids. So if you do have kids and you have screen time turned on, right? If you use screen time, I don't use screen time, but if you do use it and if you have a kid enrolled to your iPhone, linked to your iPhone, you can now enable a feature called communication safety. 
and this is so so important guys i really love what apple is doing here and as i said since i don't have uh, a child a kid enrolled to my iphone i can show you through photos as well and as you guys can see here what this feature will do is automatically detect on your child's phone if they receive any kind of nudity any kind of photos that are inappropriate sensitive content or anything like that and if you have this feature turned on, communication safety, if your kid gets a message like that, it'll be automatically blurred, even before they can see it. It'll be blurred, and then uh, if they tap on the photo to see it, uh, iMessage will give this information, say that this photo could be sensitive, are you sure you wanna view it, and a ton of information on how they should actually deal with it, uh, talk to a parent, pay attention if they really wanna do it, and more than that, uh, it's giving a ton of advice, like it's your choice, but make sure you feel safe. So it's like having a guardian on your iPhone all the time, paying attention and taking care of your kid, of your child or your daughter, your son. Uh, and this is so, so cool, guys. I absolutely love this feature. And if I did have a son or a daughter, I would definitely turn this on. Now let's talk about a new mail feature. So let's open up the mail app. And if you use the hide my email feature, which you need to be an iCloud Plus subscriber to get this feature. As you can see, straight from the composing page from your email, you can easily tap on the from, which is your email, of course, and you can easily hide my email. So you can hide your email straight from the mail app while composing a new message. So this is so, so cool to have this ability to toggle this on or off while composing it instead of going to settings and everything like that. And if you don't know what the hide my email feature is, as you can see here, you can create a random address that forwards to your inbox. So if you wanna send an email to somebody, but you don't want that person to actually see your actual email, your actual address, it'll create a random one and when they reply, You'll get the message, but the person won't know your real address. So this is so, so cool. You can tap on hide my email, send this email to anyone that you want. You can keep replying backwards and forwards and they will never know your actual address. Now let's talk about a feature called legacy contact, which is not a really pleasant subject to talk about, but it could be extremely important in a difficult situation. Let me explain. If you actually go to settings, and then you tap on Apple ID, your name here at the top, and then you go to password and security, let it load, and then right here at the bottom, we have legacy contact. And as you can see, a legacy contact is someone you trust to have access to the data in your account after your death. So as I said, it's a sensitive topic, it's not pleasant, but this could be extremely important if something happens if um, uh, let's say a family member dies and then uh, they have on their phone important information, important data, banking information, uh, whatever, maybe just photos, maybe memories. And if you don't have this feature turned on, no one will actually be able to access the data. But if you do, if you add a legacy contact, and here you can add your family members, of course. So your father, your mother, maybe your daughter, uh, a family member that you trust. Uh, when you die, that person or those people will have access to all of the data on your iPhone. So again, not really pleasant, but super helpful in a lot of situations. Now let's talk about Apple Music, because Apple has finally implemented some super important new features. Feature number one is the fact that now you can tap on any playlist, as you guys can see here, and you can finally search a song that's in that playlist, as easy as that. So all you gotta do is actually pull down and you have the search bar right here, and then you can search for any song that's on that playlist. Super obvious, but it just wasn't there. And on top of that, Apple has finally released the Apple Music voice plan right here in iOS 15.2. So now we have three plans for Apple Music, the individual, which is just for one person, the family plan for six people, for up to six people, and the voice plan, which is also for just one person, but you have quite a lot of limitations uh, if you compare to the individual plan. If you don't know what the Apple Music voice plan is, it's pretty much having the ability to use Apple Music just by voice. 
So the only way to control Apple Music, instead of using all the menus and buttons and uh, having all the browse, the listen now and everything like that, with the Apple Music voice plan, you can only interact with your voice using Siri. So then you would ask Siri to play a song by an artist or maybe an album by an artist or something like that. So use Apple Music only with your voice and not really by browsing uh, through the application. The advantage of the Apple Music voice plan is the price. It costs half of what the individual plan does, so it'll set you back five bucks instead of 10 bucks. So if you're a casual user, if you don't really use a lot, if you don't love music, if you don't love the curated uh, playlist or anything like that, it could be worth it for you just for the price, but I wouldn't recommend, in my opinion, I think it takes a lot of the control by just having to always use Siri. I think that's kind of annoying. But again, it could be useful, especially because it's just five bucks. And now, last but not least, let's talk about performance and battery life. I personally couldn't tell any difference whatsoever in both. So uh, performance is exactly the same. I wasn't getting much bugs here on my 13 Pro Max at all. I, it's super fluid, super good. Uh, I don't see any problems and I wasn't having any problems in iOS 15.1. So same goes with 15.2. Battery life, same thing. I'm always getting a full day of battery life and I don't think we will see a huge difference here in 15.2. If you have bugs and battery problems though, maybe in the new update, after updating, you will get those fixed and patched but it's not 100% guarantee and also don't expect a huge change. As I said, in performance and battery life, it should remain pretty much the same unless, as I said, you have a bug, then maybe it'll fix it. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I wanted to show you, everything that's new in iOS 15.2. And of course, my recommendation is do update it if you are in iOS 15, do update it. Uh, all the new versions are always better than the previous one. If you're holding on to iOS 14 or 13, then you should continue holding on. But as I said, if you are already on iOS 15, do update, you will not lose anything. You will always get better results, all right? So that's it. Please make sure to hit the like button down below if you enjoyed this video. On top of that, the subscribe button, a little bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. And also hit the comment box down below. I always do appreciate all your feedback, all right? So that's it, and I'll see you in the next video as usual. Bye-bye.